All right, there we go. Let's see where we can put this. Guess we can put this right here. Shalom. Shalom, everyone. The sun's coming out today, but when I first, it was looked clean, and I was going to go to the wilderness because I like teaching in the wilderness. But uh, then it got cloudy and rain, but then the sun seems like it might come out. Starting to see blue skies, but you can see dark clouds, so I don't want to bring my laptop out there, and then it starts raining, and then bam, I actually just got this laptop, but maybe five months ago. So, you guys could bear with me on the lighting, I'm trying to figure it out myself. I haven't been in the ride in a while. You guys can see me pretty good. Looks like the picture quality is better when I'm outside for some reason. Anyone who's on, give a little shout out. Running a little late. For some reason, when I kept trying to load up the live screen page, it'll just kind of show the the boxes, but the page wouldn't load up. So I had to log out and load, log back on, refresh the page. So I was having problems kind of getting the live stream going. Anyone else on there? Say shalom. Hi, how you doing? Whatever. And we'll begin in a little bit. See that? Not that. That's pretty... No, that's bad. You guys still there or not? Is it loading? I can't see replies from you guys. Can you guys see me? I'm not sure if it's acting up. Give it. Okay, cool. All right, let us begin. Let us begin. All right. Got you. All right, cool. Hopefully you guys, how was you guys this, uh, week so far hopefully it was good i definitely start off i want to thank the most high giving me another week um giving me another time to make income time to prepare myself to time to be a blessing to my family i just thank the almighty uh i just thank the almighty for all the people out there we could reach hopefully we're touching people's souls hopefully people have the unction to repent and come to this gospel um I really want the best for people. I want them to make it into the kingdom. Pray for my kids. Thank you to Almighty. He's given me a week, uh, another week. Lease my kids um, to me because at any time he could take them away. They they belong to him, and I just his caretaker of them. So I thank you that my kids bring me joy and happiness, and uh, he allowed me to have them. Uh, thank the Almighty for my health. Um, that I don't have COVID or pneumonia or the flu. Or anything that makes me not work so I can't make money 
I don't have anything to where I can't come to work, you know, regardless of what it is. You know, um, I definitely thank the Almighty for that. Uh, faith with works, I do do healthy habits. I have been going on pretty much seven, eight weeks, cutting my sugars, like eight, like 10%. Every once in a while, I, I cut cold turkey though. I went cold turkey, no, no sweets for six, seven weeks. And then I just do Sabbath. And then whatever I don't finish on the Sabbath, I throw away. But for you to break something, you got to quit cold turkey. Period. There's no way around that. There's no, I'll just eat a little cut, a Nicorette patch and no. Cut that stuff off. Let it go. A year, two years, whatever. Let that stuff go. And I'm referring to sin. If there's anything sinful, let that stuff go. You know what I'm saying? People dip dab and, oh, I can still hang out with my friends. And next thing you know, you sinning. Next thing you know, you cussing. It's like, cut your friends off completely. Then if you want to reach out to them, reach out to where you've been saved. They always want to, they're not even baptized yet. No, oh, I'm going to still hang out with my friends and try to reach out to them. And, you know, I want to share the gospel. You get the gospel. Get the gospel in your heart. Get the Ruach HaKadosh. Be obeying. Then go back. And next thing you know, they're back to picking up the blunt. Back to smoking a cigarette. Back to this. And that's the same thing with anything. You know, I see time and time again, people with alcohol. They are they get drunk. They're alcoholic. Oh, I just cut back. No, 100% zero cigarettes, zero alcohol, zero, zero. Don't just, oh, I just drink a beer every here and there. And the next thing you know, oh, I got drunk. I drank one too many beers and I sinned against the most high. If that happens one time, then obviously you need to quit. You need to quit. You don't have self-control. That discipline you thought you had or you wanted to have, oh, you know, no, you don't have it. I'll just teach on it later because I wanted to do, you know, if your right hand offend you, I'm going to do that anyways next Sabbath. Praise the Almighty. Hopefully you guys are good. I think that you guys are here. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully uh, we'll get some more viewers to jump on. I appreciate you guys. And let's get into the book. It's a short one today um, because I wanted to give some news uh, out uh, dealing with us. It's not too much news, but um, it's definitely showing you that it it is getting prepared to close out on people little steps here the redwood tree is slowly gonna fall one chop at a time so definitely give all welcome to true hebrews united of the lord yeshua this is teacher simon coming at you again one more sabbath coming back at you again dj simon teacher simon coming at you so um definitely give all honor to the most high yah through his son, Yeshua Mashiach, definitely give double honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet. Teaching this word, persuading people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel. I am one of many. I definitely thank all the brothers and sisters out there, the ones that's really obeying. Not the one, oh, I'm born again. No, not the one that's entitled, but the one in, in deed and in love. So... Uh, all those people keeping the Almighty's commandments, statute, judgments, precepts, and ways. All the people that watch and like, share, and follow Facebook and YouTube. If this is your first time, please go to the YouTube channel and subscribe so you can get uh, up to date. It helps out the channel. Push that, you know, subscribe button, notification button. Hit it heavy, hit it hard. You know what I'm saying? So uh, definitely appreciate that. That's how the word gets forth. More people can find us. Get that stuff out there. Share it to your friends. Have them subscribe. Get that word out there. If you don't know anyone that has the gospel, how can you help? Go feed the homeless and go share this video. Go feed the homeless and go uh, tell, share the YouTube channel to people so they can subscribe and get the truth. That's one way you could get them to salvation. Find a video that you like. Send it to a brother or sister, uncle, niece, nephew, co-worker. Send that video out there. Hopefully they'll put it in their heart to watch the video and it may minister to them they may come to the gospel because you shared the video there's more than one way to be the light it's not necessarily having out cars and flyers it's getting that word out there praise almighty so with all that said being done let's let the fingers do the walking and the scriptures do the talking go ahead and give me matthew uh chapter 11 matthew chapter 11 Praise the Almighty. Matthew chapter 11. Let's get it. And I do have the shout outs. I'll have to get the shout outs later on. They're on the other side of the computer. Matthew chapter 11. Let's go. 
I want you guys to pay attention to this. Like, take this to heart. We're going to go a little bit slower, but really ponder on these scriptures. And saying, verse 16, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? He's dealing with his time, but it's still this time today. This, we see this. Oh, shalom, shalom. Uh, let the scriptures do the talking. We see this today. This is where he likes in this generation, right? It is like a, the children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows. They're sitting in the markets, calling unto their fellows. Let me sit up a little bit. There we go. And saying, we have piped and you have not danced. We have mourned and you have not limit, lamented. For John came neither eating and drinking, and, and they say he have the devil. So I sent unto you a prophet. You know, I sent people unto you. You didn't even pay attention to him for your own good. John came eating, uh, neither eating and drinking. You say you have the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, he's gluttonous and a wine uh, bibber and a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of his children. But it goes further. Then he began to abrade. The cities wherefore most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. People come to you in your life and they show you love and they want you to be saved. And these people will choose not to repent. You see it. Like whatever is in them, they see this word and some of them understand it. But they choose not to do better. Let's go on. He says, woe unto you, unto the Chorazin, woe unto you, Bethsaida, for if these mighty works which were done unto you have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. The gospel goes to some people and they do not repent. But had the Almighty showed someone else about the Sabbath, that Catholic over there about the Sabbath, that Jehovah Witness over there about the Sabbath, some of those people would have repented. But he chose to send you truth. Let's keep going. But I say unto you, it should be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. To how much is given, much is required. Is He's saying, if you read the Old Testament, he destroyed these cities. So he says, if I would have came to them and did what I came to you, they would have repented and been sackcloth and ashes long ago. But guess what? It's going to be easier for them to get in the kingdom, which they're not than for you to make it in the day of judgment. Let's keep going. And now, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty acts which were, have been done in thee, which have been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. Sodom and Gomorrah got destroyed. He said, if Amashik, if I would have came, to, if, if the Messiah would have came to Sodom and Gomorrah and start healing people, and, and start feeding the multitude and preach the gospel. Sodom and Gomorrah would have remained unto this day. He said, woe unto you. Because so I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I just sent angels out there just to see how wicked they are. I sent no prophet to them. I sent no one to tell them to repent for destruction was going to come. I just destroyed the city. But had I come. It would have remained unto this day. And I came to you and you rejected me. Let's keep going. But I say unto you that it should be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. It may be more tolerable for those homosexuals in the day of judgment than for you. Because I came to you and you repented not. This is this generation too. He says, well, how shall I liken this generation? He said, how can I explain the heart and the mindset of this generation? It is like we piped and you did not dance. We mourned and you did not lament. I sent John the Baptist to you, the greatest prophet born among women. And you still didn't repent and you mocked him and you scorned. I, the almighty manifested in the flesh has came onto you and you didn't fully receive. So all those people that got destroyed for you, it's going to be more tolerable for them to make it than for you. But it gets better. Let's read verse 12, chapter 12, same book. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. For as Jonah was, 
uh, three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be in three days and three nights in the heart of earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a uh, behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The Messiah, the Almighty come down manifested in the flesh is here. Greater than Jonas. They repented at Jonas. But the Messiah came to this generation and they didn't repent. The Messiah has come to you guys. You have the, they didn't have copies of the Bible. We've went over this before. You have a full copy of all the Torah. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which the gospel when the Messiah was on the scene. You have all the epistles of what, how the congregation should be in order. And you have the book of Revelation. And you have the Apocrypha of how Roman came in and Maccabees and people that were so strong and how the Almighty helped those whose faith was strong in the Most High. You have all this information and yet you don't repent. You don't repent. So I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 19. Luke 16, verse 19. All right, cool. And as you guys talk, I'll probably tune in while you guys get the scripture so I can stay up to date. Praise the Almighty. Let's get it. It was a late night last night. We were talking to quite a few people. I remember uh, this one dude, I ain't going to put him on blast. He called me. It was late. I actually fell asleep. He was like, Simon, you there? I said, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hit you up <laughs> tomorrow. I wasn't trying to. It was just late. Praise the Almighty. But my main thing is I, I'm open. If someone calls me, you know, I'm going to at least hear them out, you know, if it's an emergency or not, whatnot, because I never know. It may be a situation where someone's thinking about killing themselves. It may be a situation where uh, I feel uh, I'm on the Almighty's time. He allows me to work. He allows me to spend time. But you know, my main job is to serve the Most High. And not because I'm a minister. Because if I was a brother, that is your main job, to please the Most High. Your main job isn't to go to work and have kids and take them to the park and whatnot. Those are all side Those are all side quests. You know what I'm saying? And the main mission is to be saved and to be fruitful to the Most High. So, you know, I would prefer people, you know, to not call two in the morning. But if someone did, like if uh, uh, Munya B, much love to him. Hopefully he comes all the way to the gospel. He's like 13 hours ahead, so his 10 at during the day is my 2 in the morning, and he calls me, I'm going to pick up, because I'm on the Almighty. I work for the Almighty. I go to, I do sheet metal, I do an AC, I do this, I do go to the gym, all that side. My my main job is serve the most high. So, you know, now if he's like, oh, I was just seeing what you're up to, uh, did you see the Super Bowl? I'm like, hey, man, I hit you up tomorrow, you know, like that, but I always want to be available uh, for for uh, anyone that wants to come to the gospel, especially brothers and sisters, especially if it's an emergency, you hit me up. I'll wake up one day. I'll still go to work. That's not going to, you know, hurt me. Ooh, boo -hoo, you know what I'm saying? I'm not like that. But um, so I always want to have that mindset. We work for the most high. We're on his time clock, his schedule. We are always on call for the most high. I'm talking about brothers and sisters that are saved. You're always on call for the most high. You know what I'm saying? Baptize believers that's seeking the most high i'm not you know you're you're on call for him uh, all until you die you know what i'm saying so give me a uh, luke 17 and luke 16 verse 19 luke 16 verse 19 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared so much every day a rich man and there was a certain beggar named lazarus was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed from the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. So that means that the rich man probably didn't share for him if he's just desiring the crumbs, right? And uh, from the uh, rich man's table, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. 
And it came to pass that as the beggar died, he was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Check this out, man. These people, this is what's, this is how I'm tying this to. We piped and you didn't hear. We mourned and you didn't lament it. Noah, uh, greater than Noah came. So, and they didn't listen, right? These people, did. it should be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than the day for you in the day of judgment. These people did not listen to this gospel. So now he isolates this to one man, one man, right? He lifts up his eyes in hell. So by default, he was a sinner. Let's hear him out. Verse 24, and he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his uh, tip of his finger in the water to cool my tongue for the torment uh, in this flame. The first thing you do after you live as a life of sin, rich man, the first thing you do, anyone who's watching this that chooses to live a life of sin, when you lift up your eyes in hell, the first thing he does is he wants mercy. Mercy that he does not deserve because you spent 60 plus years living in sin. And we're going to deal with mercy. We're going to deal with this. We're going to get to this. The first thing he does, he doesn't even say, you know what? I deserve this punishment. This is a righteous punishment. First thing he does, Father Abraham, there you go. Because Abraham's your father. You're trying to use that to tug those strings. But have mercy on me. Why? Why should we, the fact that you lifted up your eyes in hell means that you do not deserve mercy because you chose to live a life of sin. But let's keep going. For the torment, uh, uh, for I am in torment in this flame. Verse 25. But Abraham said, son, remember <laughs> that thou in thy lifetime, remember when you chose to keep getting drunk, when you chose to keep smoking, when you chose to keep telling lies, when you chose to keep deceiving and committing adultery, when you chose to keep stealing, when you chose to keep robbing and gangbanging, when you remember in your lifetime, the gospel came to these people and they chose the gospel came and people harped and they did not dance. They mourned and they did not lament. Let's keep going. In thy lifetime, thou receiveth good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now is he uh, uh, comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, there uh, between us there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would uh, pass from hence to you cannot, neither they that will pass to us would not come from this. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him uh, to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that they may testify unto him, lest also they come into this place of torment. Once again, why are you making a request? Why are you in hell thinking that you can make a request for anything? This is what got you in hell in the first place. Because you felt that you have some kind of entitlement. You felt that you should deserve some kind of mercy. You felt that someone should give you some kind of favor. You felt that you don't, you should still make it into the kingdom and barely obey. What, 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 why do you, why should Abraham meet your request to save your five brothers? But let's stop right there. Bookmark that. We're going to come back to that same scripture. Give me Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four. And we're going to start at verse six. Philippians chapter four, verse six. Still hold the Luke because we're coming right back. Philippians chapter four. Verse six, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the most high. Right. Be careful for nothing. Hey, if you have something that's on your heart, let your request. Thank the almighty for what you got and let your request be made known to the most high. Now, let's go back to this. Amen. Okay. Cool, cool. So 
He says, hey, I pray for I have five brethren. Verse 20, I have five brethren that he may testify, lest thou also come into this place of torment. Check this out. He said, hey, you had time in Philippians. You, He had time while he was alive to save, save my brothers. You have time now to pray for your family, to pray for your son. You have time to pray for yourself. You have time to get it right with, with the most high. You have time now. Now is the time to get right with the most high. You know, uh, Shalom. If you catching up, just watch uh, watch the video over. It's gonna it's not too long, so start from the beginning and you'll catch up. I just seen you, so shalom. So um, now's the time right to get right with the Most High. He should have been praying for his brother while he was still alive. Now he wants someone to meet his request, the request he should have been praying for while he was alive, and to send forth to save his brother. But let's keep going. And Abraham said unto him, they, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear, hear them. Look, like I say to you, hey, they got Moses and the prophets. You got you, you, you have more than Moses and the prophets. That's the Torah. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You have all the epistles, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, the book of Acts, Ephesians, Philippians. You have all the epistles. You have the book of Revelation and you have the Apocrypha. You have more information than... Just Moses and the prophets. And yet you still don't obey. But let's see, see, keep going. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. See, that's the problem. They don't want to hear the word. They want this burning bush. They want something spectacular to come to you for you to repent. That's the problem with this generation. They want to just float on some clouds. They can't just read this word and just obey. No, no, no. They, they won't hear Moses. They won't hear Moses and the, the prophets. But if someone came from the, guess what? If someone came from the dead, Father Abraham, they will hear them. Even though they have the Torah. Even though they have the prophets. That's not going to work. What's going to work is if someone came from the dead. Yes, that will work. That's, that's the mindset of this generation today. This word like has no effect. The Bible says, hey, don't don't be a sober minded. They'll say, oh, I'll still drink. Bible says, don't be a gluttonous. They eat almost all that burrito and they have a little bit of burrito left. And they're like, let me just finish it. I don't want to throw it away. That's gluttony. Your, your body told you that was you were full. Your stomach told you sent a hormone. I forgot the hormone thing. Ghrelin or there's a hormone that sends you say, hey, I'm full. Don't eat more. Don't take another bite. And you still take that bite. That's gluttony. That's gluttony. You know what I'm saying? So the Bible says, hey, don't do this. Don't do that. They still do it. The Bible says don't render evil for evil. Someone does them wrong. Guess what? They do something wrong. Husband and wife, brother and sister, whatever. Mother and father. They still render evil for you. They do things in spite. They don't show love. So the this word has no effect. So this is what he says. Verse 31, he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rose from the dead. He said, no, one, I'm not going to do it. And two, that's not going to work. It says you are saved by the word. The word saves you. Faith in the word saves you. This is how this generation is. And I'm showing you because this is what's going to happen. People will come and want you to have mercy for them and pity for them. When they made no provisions to be saved. I'm talking about people that's alive. See, Nazareth was born in it when he was dead. There's people alive now. They are living in sin. And then they want mercy from people. They want favors from people because they disobey. And none will be given. Not from the saints of the Most High. And yes, we do have mercy on people. We help them that help themselves. We'll help someone as they repent from sin. Oh, you need help? Hey, you need help? I'll help you help yourself. There's a person, you know, I helped them out having trouble finding work. Hey, here's some tools to look for work. If you're really trying to help yourself, bam. You know what I'm saying? I'll help you. Hey, if I'll help you help yourself. You know, if someone's needed help, a brother needed help to get on their feet. Hey, I'll open my doors, but it's not unlimited. Hey, what is your what is your game plan? Let's sit down before you come to live at my house. Let's sit down and figure out a time schedule and a game plan. OK, what how much you think you can save? OK, you got a job. You got this. How much can you put aside? OK, this and this. So in this searching day, bam, you have your first security deposit. Bam, 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 bam. Get your stuff together. 
Oh, man, I have no game plan. Can I stay at your house and whatnot? And I can't really help you, man. I help those. that I don't I'm not Section 8. I'm not EBT. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a mill ticket. You know, neither. No man, no woman should be a mill ticket for someone else. It shouldn't be that way. No, everyone has to contribute. So let's keep going. It reminds me of uh, Mother Ward. There's a lady called Mother Ward. And when I came to the truth, she was uh, I called her Mother Ward because she was older, but she's faithful. She was a faithful Pentecostal. And I always wondered, man, why isn't she going to make it into the kingdom? Because she comes to church, she's faithful, she's there, she's on time, she does, she helps with the church. She's a faithful Pentecostal. Why hasn't she came into the Sabbath? Why hasn't she came into not eating pork? Why does she still think Christmas is okay? And she's an old school believer. Like, you I mean, she's probably at least, I don't even know if she's still alive, probably like 70 or something, right, by now. And you're like, man, you know, you would think with her heart and how much she loves the Almighty, she will be in truth. But something in there, that 1% of disobedience came in to where when she read that Bible and says, keep my Sabbath for it is holy. This is a covenant between me and you. Don't eat pork. That question popped up and she decided to override that question. She decided to choose being a Pentecostal over being saved. And then they were completely honest. And you'll see that. You'll see that time and time again. So when they say, Pray for me. I'm going to show you something. Give me John chapter 5. John, uh, uh, not gospel John, the uh, uh, James, sorry. James chapter 5. See, they'll, they'll be in disobedience and then they want you to pray for them. I get this a lot, like actually a lot. Oh, pray for me, pray for me. Watch this. Which is nothing wrong with that, because this scripture shows this. You guys ready, James? Amen. I don't know who's calling. Hopefully it's important. Oh, it's not important. Cool. Just in case if like YouTube wasn't working or something or Facebook I had to check. James chapter five, verse 14. James chapter five, verse 14. You guys ready? Let's get it. I'll fix the camera in a little bit. All right. James chapter five, verse 14. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Almighty. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Almighty shall raise him up. And if he committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. The reason why a person that is sick might have to call for the elders is because the Almighty is not hearing their prayers because they're sinning. This is why it says the Almighty will have mercy on them. And if they committed any sins, the Almighty will forgive them. This is why he said that. So there is a time where brothers and sisters are people out there are in disobedience and they they know, man, I'm not right to pray to the most high. You know what? I need to pray for people that's living holy, living right and have them pray for me. And peradventure, the almighty will have mercy on me for their sake and um, will heal me of the sickness. So and, it, and, and if he committed any sin, it shall be forgiven. So there's nothing wrong with people asking believers to pray for them. But here's the thing. If they committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Now, for us to pray and get your sins are forgiven isn't for you to go back to drinking alcohol, telling lies, committing adultery. That isn't the reason why I'm praying for you. The, oh, pray for me. I have no problem praying for people. But if you're not trying to repent, why do you want someone to pray for you? Not only for you to get out of your sickness, but forgive me. You want your sins to forgive so you can keep continuing to sin against the most high. Now, right here, verse 16, this is the problem. Because they'll say, pray for them. Verse 16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you come to a righteous man or a righteous woman to pray for you, but you're not confessing your faults. You're not saying, hey, pray for me. I'm sick. Hey, I've really been drinking 
or I've really been lying. I've really been committing adultery. I've really been stealing. I've really been beating on my wife. I've really been uh, uh, clocking on the, on the job and, and leaving early and still getting paid for eight or whatever. Whatever. I've really been watching these TV shows with cussing. And some of you guys be watching, uh, playing video games with cussing on it. I ain't saying no names. I'm not giving no blames. Some of those video games be having cussing on it. They be playing those games. Leave that stuff alone. I really been watching stuff I shouldn't. I go to places I shouldn't. I be hanging around people I shouldn't. They'll. Pr if you're gonna have someone pray for you, and especially if it's and you know there's sin in the camp, there's sin in your life. You need to confess that. And I'm not saying you gotta be a pope, but we're trying to pray for you that not only you get healed for your sickness, but that your sins get forgiven. Not for you to continue to do it, but you need to confess that stuff that you might be healed. Confess your faults one to another. Hey, pray for me, man. I think this sickness came upon me because I've been doing this to so-and-so, or I've been lied about this, or this happened, or that happened. Pray that I get favor in the courtroom, and I've been slipping up in these areas. They're not completely honest, because when you're not completely honest, then you're deceiving. It's, if I'm, I, you look at people, and they have a portrait, they have an image. I produce this image. Hey, I'm a minister, teacher, Simon. Okay, you know, we'll prove your prove that you're a minister. Well, look how I teach. I teach with authority. I teach the word and I break down the scriptures. You see within yourself if I'm able to teach this gospel. Do I break down the scriptures and simplify it for you so you have understanding in areas that uh, produce salvation or in areas that are that will equate to you being saved? You judge within yourself. Hey, I'm a husband. Well, okay, he's a husband. Okay, let's see how he treats Sister Whitney. Let's see how he let's say let's see how he interacts with his kids. Let's see what kind of husband he is. So I'm giving you this image. I'm giving you this uh, picture. But I come to you and say, hey, man, there's been a time where I've been a messed up husband. There's been a time where I had uh, anger issues and I had to repent from there. There's been times where I've been wrong. There's been times where I was not humble enough, even though she was right. But I couldn't just say, hey, you're right. I need to do better. And that pride, that manly pride, like, oh, I always got to be right. I always got to be a leader will kick in. And I had to get rid of that stuff. You know, there's been times where I had to humble myself and I try to be face value. I don't try to sell you an image that I'm not. And that's what they say, keeping it 100, keeping it real. Yeah, I ain't going to tell you secrets. Oh, this is the position I do with my wife. No, no, I'm not talking about all that. But the image I'm bringing to you is what you see is what you get on face value. So when people say, hey, pray for me, this and this, and they're giving me an image and they're not that image. And they're, they're leaving out omitting details and they're painting them an image better than what they are. Or I'm not even going to say better, different than what they really are. That's deception. This is why it says confess your faults to one another. Don't say, oh, I don't know why I'm sick. Well, maybe you're sick because you're sinning. Why won't you tell brothers and sisters, hey, man, you know, pray for me. Um, You know, they say that, you know, th uh, uh, I might. I don't know, have cancer, it's terminal. And, you know, I cheated on my wife and I never told her. And, you know, sure enough, sure, sure. As soon as that happened, man, I got, you know, this and this and cancer popped up and they said, hey, they, you know, pray that I get favor. But, you know, I'll be, hey, you need to make it right. You need to go tell her what you did. You don't just uh, stop doing it. You need to go and confess that you need to go get right. And we'll pray for you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm making up this scenario it just came to the dome. But that's part of people praying for you. If you're saying, hey, pray for me. Not only that the Almighty gives me favor or shows me mercy, I need to repent from sin. And this is what I'm doing. Don't, oh, I don't know. I don't know why I got, uh, you know, good and well, you living in sin. You think you're not going to reap that? It says you sow in the wind, you shall reap the roar wind. Adam took one fruit from the whole garden and the Almighty took the whole garden. He took the whole garden because he took one fruit. <laughs> it, it, you sow in the wind, you shall reap a tornado. You're going to reap that. When I go feed the homeless, I'm going to reap that. That one time my car breaks down and I'm trying to hitchhike and no one wants to pick up hitchhikers. And I'm like, oh, man, I need help, man. My car broke down. There's no exit for miles. I'm stuck in the desert. The Almighty will send that one dude and give you favor. And like, thank you, Almighty. And you won't know. That's because you was feeding the homeless. You was taking, you was taking care of the least of his. You will reap that whirlwind of righteousness back to you. But when you sow in iniquity, oh, that's coming to you. Then you ain't going to like it. And the reason why people play is because the tornadoes that came to you, you think, oh, it's not that bad. It's just a little breeze. It's just a little this. It's just a little this. I got time. I got time to repent. I got time. 
and these people are playing. You're not dancing. You're not lamenting. You're not mourning. You're not taking serious. Oh, you know, that's not for me. I'm going to make it. I'm a good person. Or whatever you deceive yourself to think it's okay to still live in sin, still be in disobedience, and still think you have time to repent. I, I don't get it. And then when you when you do reap it like Lazarus, have mercy on me. Uh, like the rich man, send Lazarus. The dip is for now you want mercy. You could have mercy now. You could have mercy today. The Almighty could show you favor today. He could show you favor today. Give your heart to the Most High. Serve Him with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. I've seen people, as soon as they get a job, they stop reading. They stop praying. They stop fasting. They, it goes down. It goes down. Down to nothing. There's a sister we're trying to reach out to, and she's just missing in action. She was a powerful sister. Missing in action because she ended up working, getting a second job to take care of, and then she's in this weird situation. Man, she's going to get caught like the flood. She's going to get caught off guard. If she's not working, she's sleeping. And it's like, why? So then that job comes before the most high? So what that job comes before the most high? We don't live to work. We live for the most high. If you have, if you don't have time to read and pray, if you don't have time to go on a walk and just bask in the Almighty's presence and just to give Him praise and not this quick, oh, thank you for my food. Okay, I'm done. No, nah, then you're too busy. You're too. You better figure it out. You better get off that Facebook, get off that TV, get off. Something's got to drop. So you need to include the Almighty in. Something has to be put aside, and it ain't. It ain't gonna be the Most High. He don't get the crumbs from the master table. He is the master. Don't forget that. Let's keep going. Confess your faults, especially if, if people all oh, pray for me or whatnot. Hey, be honest. Be open. What's up? What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Why do you want to? Oh, I want favor with this and this. You want favor to get custody of your kids? Are you living right? What what favor do you want for the most high? This dude's in hell and he wants favor that just send Lazarus to come and help him out. He wants a request to send Lazarus to go and talk to his five brethren. Why he's in disobedience, that's why he's in hell. You're alive right now in disobedience, but all oh, pray for me, Simon, that the Almighty give me favor to get custody of my kids. Pray for me, Simon, that the Almighty gets me this job. Pray, and, and there's nothing wrong with asking because we see this in the scripture. Pr have brothers and sisters that prep and pray for righteous men avail them much. But when it comes to confessing your faults, why don't you do that part of the prayer? Why don't you say, hey, man, I'm slipping. I need help. Give me a game plan to where I could stop drinking completely. Give me a game plan where I could stop doing this. Give me a game plan to where I could grow in the most high. They will never do that. But it's so easy to say, hey, pray for me. Pray for me. Nah, I'll show you scripture for that. Let's keep going. I do pray for people, by the way. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 63, Deuteronomy 28, verse 63. I want you to keep in, look at this scripture. Just really think about it. Deuteronomy 28. Verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as the almighty rejoice to do you good and to multiply thee so the almighty will rejoice to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and you shall be plucked off from the land where he goes and possess you now imagine the almighty the creator of all things rejoicing being happy taking pleasure into destroying you you ever notice those people that torture people and they take pleasure in doing it? And you're like, man, how can you, how can this dude do that? The Almighty Himself is taking pleasure to destroy you because you choose to live in sin. You choose to not comply. He's done nothing. He's has done nothing to me that warrants me to sin against him. What has the Almighty done? And sometimes you're born, hey, I could have been born, my mindset and my soul could have been born in a poor place in, in Brazil or whatever. And I could have been born in a poverty. 
I just happened to be born here. My soul, I would say. You know, and the hand that was given, the hand is given. And I got to work my way out. Some people are born in poverty. Some people are born in the riches. But that doesn't mean I sin against the most high. That doesn't mean I sin. He's done nothing to me. He's done nothing but righteousness and peace and joy. And I chose to go out and gangbang. I chose. To, so I reaped that whirlwind. I reaped that. Some people, oh, my life sucks because I have AIDS. I'll never be able to marry no one or this. Hey, well, you chose to fornicate. You chose to fornicate. You cho you, kn you knew you were playing Russian roulette. You chose to do drugs and drugs leads to unsafe sex. You chose to go to that fraternity party and now you got date raped. You chose to go to that. They shouldn't have raped me. Yeah, that's true. But you shouldn't have went. You chose that. You go to the house party and you know it's in a gang infested neighborhood and you're going to a house party and you think no gang members are going to show up and let you do something to one person and you think that gang ain't going to jump you and stop you out? You think he's going to give you a one on one fade and catch go come from the shoulders? You might get shot, but you chose to go to that party. So you reap that whirlwind for that sin. And yeah, maybe you may get away. Maybe you went to that party and nothing popped off. And so you get comfortable. Ah, oh, it's all right. It's all right. All right. But eventually you will reap what you sow. You will reap and the almighty will rejoice to do you evil because you played. You played. Let's keep going. It gets further. Look what Joshua says. Next book over. Joshua, verse 20, chapter 24. We almost done, by the way. Joshua, chapter 24. Let's go with verse uh, 20. If you will forsake the most high and serve strange gods, which every person on this planet serves strange gods. It says you cannot serve two masters for either you love the one or hate the other. If you're not fully serving the almighty, you're still serving Satan. Oh, I serve the almighty, but I still eat pork. You're serving Satan because he's getting you to sin against the most high. Oh, I, I don't I don't eat pork and I don't keep these feast days. But I still get drunk every once in a while. I still cuss every once in a while. I still lie every once in a while. You still serve Satan because he's the father of lies. If you yield your uh, your members, your body unto sin, then you're a servant of Satan. There's no way around that. So let's keep going. If you forsake the almighty and serve strange God, then he will turn to do you hurt and consume you after he have done you good. He will turn around and be your enemy. Like, do you really want the almighty to be your enemy? Just think about it. Do you want the almighty to be your enemy? To turn on you? Well, get right. Repent. You know what I'm saying? Get right and repent. Let's keep going. Last scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Oh, no. Revelation chapter 18. Last two scriptures. And we're going to start at verse, verse 1. Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power and the earth, lighted up with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen and become the habitation of devils and, and, and the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every uh, every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornications and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have what which did the abundance of her delicacies and i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that you be not a partaker of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven the almighty have remembered her iniquities reward her even as she have rewarded you and double unto her uh, uh, according to her works and the cup that she has filled filled to her double so almighty says come out so just like i sometimes ponder why some people that are super faithful and faithful christians or faithful this why they never come to the truth is because in the end there's some kind of whether it's a characteristic flaw or some dishonesty to to where they just don't want to come 
They don't want to see that scripture and say, hey, I need to study on that. There's a possibility that the congregation I'm at is not is not right. And same thing with Babylon. Sometimes there's going to be a lot of people we know. Oh, I want to get out. Oh, I want to get out. Oh, I want to get out. And stuff pops off and they don't make it out. And it, you're like, man, you know, they were serving the almighty. They were seeking the almighty. Why, you know, why didn't they make provisions? Because there was something that just stopped them. Whether they didn't want to discipline themselves to get a passport. Whether they enjoyed, like Lot's wife, enjoyed the pleasure. So just like Lazarus, there'll be no pity for them. They'll be like the rich man, not Lazarus. They'll be like the rich man. But how the rich man opened his eyes in hell, you're going to open your eyes in Babylon and you're going to realize that like there's no getting out. The rich man, there was no getting out. You're going to get stuck. There's no getting out. And you're going to want mercy and pity. And, oh, I just had to pay this off. Or, oh, and you're going to live a life of regret, just like anyone in the lake of fire. Like, man, dude, I should have just repented. Imagine how many people in the lake of fire say, man, if I could go back, I would have done things different. Just like we say now, man, if I knew what I knew today when I was 18, I would have lived my life different. I would have made better choices. I would have invested my money in this. I would have built my credit. I would have did this. You would have went back and made better decisions. Don't have that be your testimony. Have the best decision you make is to serve the most high. Make that. that if you could if you can mess up on all your financial decisions, if you can mess up on all your parenting, if you just destroyed everything, but you can make one decision which is to fully serve the most high. That would be the best decision you could possibly make. That'd be make because the almighty can fix all that. Almighty can fix marriages, can fi build bonds back with children, finances, open doorways for jobs. But if you could just get that decision right and not have to live in regret. Uh, I've never said, man, I regret serving the most high. I've never, that thought never even came to my mind. There's been times where I'm like, man, I shouldn't have married Whitney. And that was out of anger, you know, and I'm pretty sure she's like, man, if I go back, I want to marry Simon. You know what I'm saying? You might have those thoughts. And I just say, like I said, I keep it 100. I'm not going to make it seem like my marriage is all oh, seventh heaven and we're just all oh, we're the best and we did never get in arguments. No, nah, you know, I just keep it real. Um, But if I could go back, I definitely, you know, went in a date at certain people, especially my first kid's mother. Like I, I would have there have been a whole bunch of changes off top. But. I don't want to, there's never, oh, I wish I never served the most high. Never. Like, just go all the way with the most high. You won't regret it. That's like investing in a retirement that you cannot, it's impossible for your eternal life. Eternal life with the most high? Why? Why would you play around? Why would you play around with sin? What sin has more value than eternal life? What sin has more value than that? What sin has brings you more pleasure than your relationship with the most high what does just type it out if you say man you know what having sex with a whole bunch of different women brings me more pleasure than eternal life so you're going to spend eternity in in damnation 60 years that that little private member of yours can only stay at wreck so many years once you get 70 80 90 and may not perform like you want so there's a couple of years where you ain't even going to be doing what you used to do when you're 20 30s and 40s you know what i'm saying so 40 maybe 50 years of that pleasure for eternity in the lake of fire that alcohol being drunk you could be a drunk all the way till you die i see some 80 year olds still getting drunk yeah okay you got a good 80 years of drinking but then guess what eternally eternity i wouldn't even want to do 80 years of drinking for one year in the lake of fire i don't even think that's a fair trade because I can't imagine being eternally tormented in flames for one year. And that I don't even think that equates 80 years of being a drunk or chasing women or just for one year in torment and in torture. You, torture will drive people insane. Just being in prison drives people insane, let alone being, being in torment. I'm good. That's hey, if, if you feel that that sin is better than eternal life, then hey, so be it. Let's keep going. Deuteronomy 13. And we're going to start at verse 6.
if thy brother, and this is a strong one, if thy brother or thy son or thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or thy wife or thy bosom or thy friend, which is like thy own own soul, that's why I keep telling people I feel that. Never mind. But whatever. That's another scripture proof. I'll deal with that later. Which is thy own soul, thy friend, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, nor thy fathers. Namely, the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee are as far off from thee, even unto the end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall thy eye pity them. Neither shalt thou, shall thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Kill him. Thy eye shall not shall be for, uh, thy hand shall be first upon him, and thou shalt put uh, put him to death afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Almighty, thy Yah, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall not do no more such wickedness as this is among you, right? So it's saying, hey, don't, even if it's someone close to you, don't even pity. When the Almighty passes judgment, there will be no pity. There is no pity for the rich man. Sin Lazarus, Father Abraham. There was no mercy. Have mercy on me. Well, at least, at least save my brother. Oh, let's give this man favor. As he sinned and all his life, he gave the middle finger to the most high. He lifts up his eyes in hell. And we should say, you know what? For your sake, we're going to send Lazarus to speak to your five brethren. Because you were living so holy while you were alive. You were living so righteous while you were alive. And now that you, I don't know why you woke up, lifted your eyes in hell. We're going to give you your request. We're going to show you mercy and give you a, not even just a dip of finger. We're going to give you a big gulp, a 64 ounce 7-Eleven big gulp of water. And then that you could take a cold shower too in those flames. And we're going to send not only Lazarus, we're going to send five other people to come and help them get out, help them to repent and do right. No, that's not going to happen. Just like this. Hey, there's no pity. There's no pity. It says Sodom and Gomorrah should rise up in this generation and condemn it. If these works happen in Sodom and Gomorrah, it says Sodom and Gomorrah is going to condemn this generation because they would have repented. They got no chance to repent. Um, a Shia came on the scene. You guys don't repent. You guys don't receive. And that's the same thing. I'm, 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 I'm playing a pipe to you guys today. I'm, I'm mourning to you guys. And hopefully you guys dance. Hopefully you guys lament and, 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 and repent and come to this gospel. Hopefully that rich man doesn't have to be your testimony. That don't have to be your story. Yeah. You know, I heard the word. I chose not to fully commit. I live in another 20, 30 years. I knew about the Sabbath for 30 years. I knew about not eating pork. I knew about not committing adultery, not getting drunk, not telling lies. And I, you know, for 30, 40 years or even for five years, I, I, I thought I had time. And man, I just got in a car accident and I died. And I lifted up my eyes in hell. But for five years, I heard truth. And I thought I had 20 more years because I'm only 20. I'm only 30. I'm only 40. I got time to repent. I got time to get right with the most high. I'm good. You know, even though one of my friends died and my, one of my friends died and they were younger than me, even though a family member died in his 40s or 30s or whatnot, I'm good. I got another 20, 30 years. I'm good. I don't need to repent right now, right now. I can repent, man. I get my life right in six months. And that's the mindset you have. And this is what it's causing you. Perfect example. I try to, I don't like to tell other adults what to do. I never like when people say, you should do this or you should do this. I say, hey, man, as a brother, as a minister, um, I'm going to give you, you know, some suggestions. I'm going to show you the pros and cons. This is what I would suggest is a good suggestion for you to do. And and I'm going to give you all the information on both sides, the pros and cons. And I suggest you should do this. So you give someone a suggestion, right? You give someone a suggestion and then their mind is made up like, you know, their mind is made up. Some of you guys, I've given you suggestions. You guys are watching. I gave you some suggestions. You say, no, because I want to do this and this and this. And it totally went what I said to avoid. I said, if you do this, look out for the little ones. You don't want to put this in a situation. This is going to go bad. Hey, no, I want to do this. I want to do this. And it totally is like, look, no, man. And I'm not saying I know everything. But when when I try to give advice to any person on this planet, 
It's going to be based off of biblical principles. Whether it's doing with money, when I say, hey, put some money aside and buy some preps. Why? Because it says, watch and pray that these don't things don't catch you anymore. Hey, build your credit up. So, hey, you know, if you have a credit line, a credit card with $2,000, then if you need to leave Babylon today, you could buy a plane ticket today. You could catch your Uber, go to the airport, pack your suitcase up, and be out of the country today. Today. That's what you want to have. You don't want to be stuck here. You get, get your chips and dip. You want to get your stuff established. So whether it's financial, whether it's parenting, it's all based off of spiritual principles. Some people, oh, you know, they know what's best. They all oh, know this and this. They don't want to give heed to suggestion. I'm not saying you have to do everything I say, because you may have more knowledge in construction or mechanics or this, you know, but when it comes to basic things and I give suggestions, all right, you don't have to. Time will tell if your way is right. But they have this mindset, like, I know what's best for me. I know what's best for me. Hey, you should probably do this. Oh, no, no. I'm like, okay. Okay. If you know what's best for you, why aren't you saved? If you know what's best for you, why haven't the Almighty given you the rule of dish? Why aren't you baptized yet? Because what's best for you is to repent and be baptized and you shall receive the gift of the rule of dish. That is what's best for you is to be saved. So if you truly know what's best for you, and I'm not saying I am a prophet and what I say is am the best and I'm the prophetess of the prophets on this planet. You know what I'm saying? Prophetess actually is a girl, but I'm the super prophet. Um, I'm not saying that, but if I'm giving you suggestions and they're based off of spiritual principles and I'm led by the spirit and you're not baptized, you're not saved, so it's impossible for you to be fully led by the spirit, then maybe you need to take consider the latter end of my conversation. Not saying you have to do exactly to the T what I say, but maybe you need to take some sure, serious consideration because it's like, hey, this minister or this brother in the almighty, living righteous, living holy, is giving you what's best for your salvation, for your sanity, for your kids, for your financial status, is really trying to give what's best for you. Maybe I need to consider that. Maybe I need to consider that because at the end of the day, if you know what's best for you, then you'll be saved. And some of you people out there, not necessarily people uh, watching today, you guys, you guys think, you know, but you don't know unto salvation. At the end of the day, if you died today, would you make it into the kingdom in your condition? And if you're saying no, I wouldn't make it into the kingdom because I still lie. Or some of you guys are lying just because you're painting a picture of yourself that you're not you're being a double person you're being two-faced you're 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 lying through you you're deceiving people you're making yourself seem better than what you are you're making yourself seem better oh well you know i have you ever make those people that tell you a story and then they leave out details so they sound better than what they are that's deception you are deceiving people you are deceiving people and and who is the master of deception satan Satan is. You are having his attributes and his behavior. You are deceiving people. You're doing what Satan does. He deceives people. He makes them think into Big Bang, evolution. He deceives people. That's what he does for a living. And you are deceiving people. And you really think you could be deceiving people and make it into the kingdom. You really think you could deceive people and not have to reap that. Jacob deceived his brother put some hair on. Yeah, I'm Esau. I'm ready for my birthright. He deceived, right? What happened? Abraham worked seven years for Rachel. Guess who got deceived? Snuck in Leah. He ended up getting Leah. Worked seven years. Now he had to work more time because he was deceived. It came right back to him. It came right back to him. He still had to reap that. The Almighty was with him, but he still had to reap that. Because you want to deceive, guess what? You be deceived. And when people find out the deception, guess what? You burn a bridge. And that's less people in your corner. So the main purpose, to recap, before we get into the news is, A, the time is now. Don't think mercy and, and, and pity and favor is going to come to you if you ain't really trying to live right. All you people out there here, I want you to be safe. I'll do this diagram. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see it, right? This is this inner circle. There you go. 
inner circle. And, and with these people, these are people I'm really trying to work at. They're prospects. They believe the word. We're trying to be there and coach them as they get to the point to where they can repent, fully repent. Hey, I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't cuss. I don't keep these false days. I'm not unequally yoked. And they get to a point where they can get baptized because you have to repent to get baptized. After that, we'd be praying on them that they receive the Ruach HaGadish. They'd be a part of True Hebrews United. If they're far away, maybe we could find a congregation. Say if they live in Canada or whatnot, maybe they could come. I say, hey, get out of there. Come to Belize and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, or find them a congregation in truth. Whatever. That's the point. But when people come, don't play the part. I'll deal with that in another Bible study. But don't play the part as if you really want to serve when you don't. You know, if you really just want to watch, if you just want to watch, right? Let's say, let's see this. Uh, there you go. There you go. If you're just this, you're just watching, but you're really not have stuff right and whatnot. Just say, hey, man, I'm trying to work on this. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. But don't come in the picture like you're living. You're really trying to go 100 percent when you're not. Like, just be honest. And we're here for you. I've I've had a mindset. I don't give up on no one. I don't give up on no one, even when they're giving up on their self. Just keep pressing, keep striving. But at the same time, don't waste people's time. If it, I'm not going to, I will always be there for anyone that really wants to be saved. But if you really don't want to be saved, just say, hey, I still want to live in sin. Just be honest. All right, we'll just keep watching service. But when you make that phone call, hey, Simon, what, what do I need to do to be saved? I, I'm ready. I want to give my life to the most high. Hey, I'm here for you 100%. But when you say, hey, I really want to give my life to the most high, and then you really not, you're really just going to secretly live in sin. You're going to secretly just be disobeying. Like, you're not even trying to repent. There's, that's the difference. Um, I'll give 10, 20 years to people that's really, like, a bachelor's, right? Let's say associate's, associate's degree, two years. Why do you have to have associate's degree in repenting? Why does it take two years to stop drinking alcohol, to stop cussing, to stop committing adultery, to stop keeping these feast days, to keep the Sabbath? Why do you need a straight bachelor's degree, a four year degree in repenting? Why did have you studied repenting for so long? What is really taking a person so long to repent from sin? It doesn't take that long. Yes, alcohol may take a couple months. Cussing took me like three months. I get it. Some sins. You've been ingrained in you. You've been doing for so many years. Working on anger takes years. It, it took time, not years, but it took time to really focus. Hey, I'm getting hot right now. Don't sin. I'm getting hot. Watch how I talk to my wife. I'm getting hot and I'm hot at the world. Let me not uh, radiate and, and uh, take it out on my kids and lash out on my kids and be irritable or be short tempered with my kids just because I'm hot with the coworker. Let me focus on these things. But it shouldn't take me no two, five, six, 10, 15 years. To repent? Why do you have an associate's degree in repentance? Why do you? Some of you guys have bachelor's degrees in repentance, working on your master's and doctor's degrees. Like, how long does it really take to repent? Seriously, what's what, what what's going? Are you really like? Are you really serious? You have to come down and say, "Hey, man, I'm not even really serious." Hey, Simon, can you pray for me? What I, I want to be serious. I keep finding myself go back to sin. What what do you suggest for me to overcome adultery? What do you suggest for me to overcome this? What do you suggest for me to overcome this? Can you pray for me that the Almighty will show me mercy, allow me to live longer so I can fully repent? Can you pray for me? And while I pray for you, hey, I'm struggling with this, 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 and this. And really come honest. Keep it 100. I tell you guys, you will have a brother or sister for life. If you just keep it 100, a everyone has shortcomings. The fact that you're not repenting is I know you're in sin. This is it's not a mystery. Anyone that's not baptized is in sin. There's just no there's no way around this. So why try to act like oh I'm not in this much sin enough? Why you're not you're not baptized anyways? You're not on the Almighty's payroll anyways. So you not being baptized, I already know. Hey, there's some stuff we need to work on. So just don't, just keep it 100. Keep it 100. Just like, hey, man, hey, I slipped up with this. This situation happened. I messed up with this. And let's move on. You know what I'm saying? Let's move on. All right, we could take it from this is our starting point. Let's move on from here. It's like going to marriage counseling and then don't want to tell the full truth to the counselor. 
and just hold back part of the information to act like you're a better husband than you are. The fact that you're in counseling means, means you need help. The fact that you're not baptized means you need help. I don't care how much help you need. I'm here for you. But don't deceive me. Don't act like you're better than what you are. Don't omit information and deceive me. Just keep it 100. I'm here for people. You know what I'm saying? So with all that said being done, I love you guys. This is a different Bible study. Oh, the news. I went longer than I want. The news. HR 157. It's another bill they're trying to pass. They're making it with guns. Now they're trying to make it for you to get a gun. You got to see a psychologist, you know, which is by the state or the government. You need to pay $800. Uh, you need to register it. And then this is for a basic license. You need to register it, and then um, there's some other loophole which costs money for you to get a gun. That's all guns. Also, anyone who has a gun, you need to prove the, your receipt and the date you purchased it. And if you can't prove where and when you purchased it, it's subject to be confiscated. So this is one way to confiscate all. Because who remembers, oh, I bought it at this gun shop, but when did you buy it? Oh, well... I don't know what. Guess what? We're going to take your gun. It's they're they're think this is a bill that they're trying to push. So then, if you want like an AR or something, now not only you got to see a psychologist, you got to come to an interview, and then they get to interview uh, your wife, your kids, anyone around you who you live with. They can interview your ex-wife. So let's say if your ex-wife, yeah, he's psychotic. I left him. Oh, guess what? You don't get guns now. You don't get guns. They're making it to where they're doing away with, with your guns. They're making it hard. Obviously, when they want to oppress you, they take your guns. That's what Hitler did. He did a gun ban, took your guns. Now they can oppress you. Australia, they took the guns when they tried to protest uh, in Australia. Those protesters got mollywopped. Mollywopped. They, they were going against them with sticks and stones. You have no right to have a gun. So if they want to oppress you, what are you going to do? You could riot all you want, but they got the guns and you don't. They got the guns and you don't. So what are you going to do? You know, so that's the first sign of tyranny. It's going to get tight. The American people, the government feels the American people is their threat. That's pretty much what it is. This is why they're taking your rights, because they know you're not going to put up for their garbage. So how can we in the 10 year, 15, 20 year plan slowly take away all their rights to where they're defenseless? And then, bam, now we got them. Yeah, you can protest protest all you want, but once we send bullets down range, we'll stop your protest off top. It don't matter. We'll just send some secret, you know, all in black, some people hired by us to shoot a couple of rounds in the crowd. crowd. Then we could say you're aggressive. Then we could go ahead and fire uh, bullets down range and stop your protest because the people were firing back like they did with the Martin Luther King march, like they did with some of these Black Lives Matter march. They sent people in there. No. The Floyd marches, not the Black Lives faggot march, but the Floyd marches. So um, they'll just send there, set it up and oppress you. It's getting tight. Hopefully you guys get it together. Look up that. That's the HR 157, the new bill they're trying to pass. Hopefully it doesn't pass. Now it's the time to get your guns if you can. See what's up. Uh, I'll <clears throat> holler at your boys if you want some ideals. And uh, actually you can't because I don't really talk too much over the phone. but. Now's the time to uh, get some kind of protection. Hey, you can't get a gun, get a crossbow. They're silent. It'll do the job. You need it for home defense. Hey, if you get the first shot and you send a bow, a bow in the lung and a bow in the heart is a bullet in the lung and the bullet in the heart. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. A, a bow head is way bigger than a bullet. And if that gets in the, if it goes through your heart, it's in the heart. If it goes through, it's the same cavity. You know how you have vests and it protects your heart and your lungs? Because you could take a gut shot and still get to the hospital and live. Same thing with a bow. A bow in the chest, a bow in the heart. It's going to do the same amount of damage. You don't got to worry. You know what I'm saying? See what's up. Figure out a way to protect yourself. You know? So hopefully that was help. I'll go over these comments right here. Amen. All right. Um, cool. It actually bringing tears to my eyes. Uh, you hear, I hear you. Hopefully, hey, you know, everyone come. Hey, get this gospel out there. I really want people to be saved. You ain't alone. We here. What if Mexico doesn't allow guns if I, uh, if I leave Babylon? If you, uh, Mexico, you'll probably have to get your guns in Mexico. 
I heard you could get guns in Mexico. So maybe you have to get your guns in Mexico. I'll tell you what. I don't say too much over the phone. <laughs> but I'm about protecting yourself by any means possible. Because forget man's law. You have an almighty given right to protect yourself and your family. I don't care if you have felonies. I don't care. You got to do what you got to do. Because if someone's attacking you, the police aren't going to be there when your wife gets raped. The police aren't going to be there when your kid gets kidnapped. They'll do their little halfway investigation. Oh, we can't find your kid. Sorry. They'll probably just take a couple of reports. Oh, sorry. We ended, we ended the search, especially if you're a minority. So you got to pr put protecting you and your kids and the people the most high in your own responsibility. Hey, I'm not going to say anything, but by all means possible. Hey, I'll put the Almighty's law before the uh before man's law. So, you know, am I likely to do something that hey, it's probably not favorable with certain places, certain establishments. They're probably not okay with that. Hey, you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say anything. You do what you do. I'm gonna do what I do. You do what you do. You know what I'm saying? If some organizations don't like how I do or what I do or when I do, then hey, I try to make it to where they don't know what I do. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, hopefully uh I can answer your questions. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that's the best way I could just say what I need to say. But praise the Almighty. Shalom, brother Simon. All praise. Hey, praise the Almighty. Shalom. How you doing? Definitely share this video. If you just stopped on Definitely come in, uh, watch it from the beginning. We hit on some uh, good scriptures. Hopefully this ministered to you guys. Hey, you guys out there that didn't get get on the Zooms, I do Zoom calls. Hey, hit me up. Annie Naki, we do the Zoom call Sabbath night where we do Zoom. Me and Sister Whitney um, uh, try to run through. We do Zoom calls. I can't get to everyone every single week, but I try to get it in. Uh, um, and, hey, I love you guys. Hey, I want you guys to make it into the kingdom. We hit people up on the Zoom calls. Go from there. If I don't get you guys on the Zoom, I try to get you guys Sabbath day. I try to swing my rounds with my phone calls. Talk to brothers and sisters Sabbath day. Go out there and reach out to you guys. I want you guys to be making in the kingdom. I want you guys to be saved. Keep pressing. Keep striving. Give the Almighty a hand clap. Shalom.